Hey there, welcome to another video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Tom Hadley and this is the Earth Stories YouTube channel where we talk about all kinds of outdoor photography, landscape, wildlife and travel. In this video, I want to talk about telephoto landscape photography using, in my opinion, one of the best lenses that Nikon ever made. So let's get to it. Okay, in this video, I wanna talk about shooting landscapes with a telephoto lens. Now, don't get me wrong, I love a 16 millimeter hero shot of a big landscape as much as the next person. But oftentimes, the bigger the landscape, actually, the less well those sorts of photos work. And what I often find myself doing is getting out longer lenses and honing in on what's really interesting, a small feature within a landscape or a small area within a landscape to really make the point of my photo that much more effective. So what is this legendary lens of which I speak? Well, it's this. The Nikon 70-200 f2.8. And for anybody who knows this lens well, uh, this is the Mark I version of this lens, the VR1 version. Uh, there is a slightly newer version out. Both of them are excellent. And I love this lens for many reasons. I love it for its build quality. It's built like a tank. I love it for its autofocus, which is sharp as a razor. I love it for the sharpness of the images that it produces. And I use it a lot for wildlife, but I also love shooting landscapes with it. So what I wanted to do today was dig back into my archive and find five images from all around the world that prove just how good this lens is at shooting landscapes. Okay, image one from Snowdonia in Wales. The point I'd like to make about this image is that using a longer lens to keep your composition tight isn't always about the physical elements within the image. This image is of a lake, and so yes, I've kept the, uh, the lake as the main subject. But what I actually like about this image is how I've resisted the temptation uh, to go wider. And I think what that's done is make the tonal value of the image better. In the foreground, we've got some nice light uh, that creates a sort of softer, um, foreground, uh, the ground in front of the lake, and then some shadow areas in the hills immediately behind, uh, which fit quite nicely with that being a, a wilder, moodier area. And then on the mountain in the background, uh, you'll see we've got some nice light just playing across uh, the slope there. And we would had pretty dramatic skies that day, lots of mood in the clouds. And as you can see, I've used just enough of that to get that thought across but without needing too much more sky as part of this image. So I think that uh, the mood of this image is greatly enhanced by restricting the field of view using the longer lens um, and letting the right tones come out in the image rather than throwing it wider and potentially getting other areas of light and shade into the image which really wouldn't have added anything to it. Our second image is from Morocco. Uh, this is a fantastic road, if you ever get the chance to do it, um, from uh, the Atlas Mountains south towards uh, Wazazat and the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Eight Ben Hadou. And this image is all about preserving uh, interesting symmetry in the image. Although this is a huge landscape where it's quite tempting to shoot with a wide angle lens, what I wanted to do here was shoot with the telephoto to preserve the main leading line into the image, the road, and then also enhance all of these diagonals that you see in the landscape uh, that help take your eye through the image and up towards the top left where you'll find the eye is naturally drawn. This image also has an interesting palette of color. And from memory, uh, this was the field of view that really enhanced those different uh, color values um, throughout the image. So again, keeping it tight um, and not using too much of the uh, green grass that you see on the right hand side of the image that I think there was, there was more or further to the right. Uh, again, that would have just detracted from uh, keeping the viewer's attention on uh, the color range that I wanted to preserve as part of the image. Image three is of the Chamorel waterfall on the island of Mauritius. This is a spectacular scene 
but I shot it on a day when, as you can probably see just at the top of the image, the sky was pretty grey uh, in the background. And I remember waiting around quite a long time at this location just to get some light hitting the waterfall uh, to punch out those colours uh, and give the image a little bit of uh, depth and a bit of contrast. There's also an awful lot of foliage um, around this area. And so to keep the viewer's attention on uh, the waterfall itself, it really needed um, a telephoto lens to just be able to avoid too much other distraction um, and just keep that those rock textures and the uh, falling water itself as the main point of the image. This fourth image is of coastal defences on the Isle of Wight here in the UK. And this image is all about the relationship between coast and sea. But the balance of the image has got to be towards uh, the land elements. You can see that it was a pretty hazy day. Uh, the sky is a pretty flat colour. So there's no point including any more sea or any more sky in this image. Uh, it really doesn't help the viewer understand what I'm trying to communicate. Again, I'm shooting from a slightly elevated position, so I wanted to keep the viewer's attention on these lines and these curves of the sea defences. It's really more about uh, the man-made structures than it is about anything else, and just include enough sea and enough of the waves uh, to show the relationship. Our fifth and final image is from the Namib Desert in Namibia. And deserts particularly are an area where we find ourselves using telephoto lenses quite a lot of the time because it's hard to make sense out of desert environments with wide angle shots. Um, often even a 70 to 200 isn't a long enough lens for deserts. Uh, you might have seen if you follow Adam Gibbs, he's been doing some amazing YouTube videos just lately uh, from the Gobi Desert in, in China and he's been shooting there with a 200 to 500 mil lens. I also use the 200 to 500 mil lens uh, quite a lot when I was in the Namib Desert. Um, but for this particular shot, uh, that was a little bit long. This was a 70 mil uh, frame. Uh, and I just wanted to show the relationship between uh, the rocky and sandy parts of this desert as it has both those qualities. There's one main difference between this image and the others that I've shown you in that this is a focus stacked uh, composite of two different frames. Um, when you're shooting with longer lenses, uh, it's not possible to get uh, the required depth of field uh, for an image like this. Uh, to show both the foreground detail and the background. So this is a combination of two different uh, exposures um, with the focus set for foreground and for background, both shot at f14. So I hope that was a useful video, just showing you the potential out there and inspiring you with a few images uh, to get out there and shoot some telephoto landscapes for yourself. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. I've got lots more great content coming your way. But in the meantime, Take care, go safe.